What kind of Asian are you and where are you calling from? JT. Uh, Vietnamese American and I am in Hollywood. Nice. Danny. Yeah, I'm Korean American uh, based out of th Thailand for now. But I'll be going to Korea in August. Uh, Justin. Hey, what's up, guys? So I'm Indian Canadian and I'm calling from Toronto. Aysen. Hey, I'm Aysen. I am a uh, bit of a mutt, half Chinese quarter Mongolian, Korean, and then the rest is like white and Native American. And I'm based out of Austin, Texas, but today I'm actually in Mexico. <laughs> no change there, <laughs> technically. Uh, Mike. Hey, my name is Mike. I'm based in Vegas, but I'm Chinese Chinese. Nice, nice, nice. Deepak. Yeah, so hey, guy, how it's going? I am Deepak from Berlin, but I am 100% Indian. Here we go. Nice. As Asian dating coaches, what kinds of issues do Asians come to you for that are somewhat unique or common to Asians. So up off of what Justin was saying, like Asian Americans have a lot of limited beliefs, internalized racism, while like students that I find from Asia, they come over here and like they don't have any of that kind of limited beliefs. They're just kind of like born and they just have to learn like American dating culture. But if you're born here, a lot of guys like they might be tall and good looking, but they were raised to believe that they weren't as good as like white guys or black guys. So definitely agree with that. Alrighty, next one. This one's more Chinese specific in china the one child policy lasted two entire generations from 1979 mm -hmm. to 2015 this means that a lot of chinese kids would grow up without brothers sisters or cousins uh have any of you guys noticed any side effects of this so for example there are claims that male babies were preferred for family which then caused an imbalance of the younger male and female populations which then caused a lot of young chinese men to be lonely virgins i don't know how true this is because there there are lots of disputes over this but feel free to add anything all i can speak of from that perspective as a coach because i have like a lot of chinese students there's something called like little emperor syndrome I, I think that's what it's called where a lot of these guys that come from china they're not used to sort of like living on their own because their parents kind of take care of everything and sort of like what mike was saying they're sort of like sheltered so they come over here and they're not used to sort of the more or I guess cosmopolitan ways of socializing with women or taking care of themselves. Like I've had students, their mom washed all their dishes, their laundry, cooked all their food well into adulthood. Come out here and it's like, okay, these are the things that uh, an adult man needs to be able to take care of themselves. You know, these are kind of the life skills that you should have. And this is kind of like a hallmark of sometimes why it's sort of hard for someone coming from the Asian motherland moving over to America and trying to learn how to date as an American, this skill discrepancy when it comes to life skills. Um, question from someone in the community. I'm a 31 year old virgin due to a terrible childhood, family responsibility at a young age and low to no social life. I have never been with a woman. It's about time I started dating women. So how can I start dating women in a matter that does not look desperate? I want to keep things sophisticated so women don't think I'm a 31 year old creep. I'm going to read in between a little bit of the lines of his statement. It sounds like, because he was like saying, I want to like socialize on a sophisticated higher level. And he's like a 31 year old virgin, right? That says to me, he has like high expectations, but low resilience, which means like he wants to be perfect, but he's not going to be able to like withstand like the slings and arrows of rejection because he hasn't faced it. I think in any kind of pursuit of mastery, of any skill level is we've got to climb that mountain. Call it cringe mountain, whatever, is whenever you have to learn something that is difficult, that is rarefied, that everyone else wants, you've got to put in the work. There is no magic bullet. There is no like sophisticated level when you're coming in from such a back foot compared to everybody else. Just embrace cringe mountain, right? Just go out there. I mean, obviously maybe get some help. Like there's a plethora of free information out there on YouTube, the internet, where you can like, to learn and you know calibrate yourself with whatever instruction and whatever help that you need but embrace cringe mountain just get out there and don't have this attitude it's like oh I'm, I'm gonna learn this highly sophisticated high level kind of game where I'll never be rejected you know I'll be able to get over my problems because I found like that perfect strategy or tactic like there is no perfect strategy there's no perfect tactic
eclectic. Each person is unique and you have to find what works specific to your situation. Alrighty, uh, let, let's move on to the next one. What are the differences you have observed in gaming Americanized Asians compared to non-Americanized Asians, as in original Asians? How do you approach and escalate differently? I mean, yeah. I just generally encourage my students to be open to dating all women, Asian, Black, White, Latina. Like that just opens up your options and not necessarily to be narrowly specific to, oh, I must be Asian motherland or Asian American because, you know, Harkening back to what Danny was saying, like the exact statistic is something like 54% of American born Asian women will outmarry, right? So whenever you are approaching an Asian American girl, it's sort of like, what is her in crowd? Because there will be, yeah, a lot of Asian American girls that want to date Asian guys. And then you'll run across those girls that specifically just like hate Asian guys, right? And they'll make it known, you know, you can't always tell. Going back to what Mike was saying, sometimes when you approach an uh, Asian, you know, fob girl who isn't and used to being approached, it's sort of like pulling teeth. So I think the best bet is for any Asian guys out there that just want to learn dating is like, just be open to dating, approaching, you know, all women, regardless of their race. Yeah. I guess we'll find out <laughs> when, when it's published. I don't know. But you know, what, uh, uh, the, the game global community, it, it's global, but um, well, you know, oh, with China, they don't really tend to I have mean, access yeah. to Facebook, Telegram necessarily, as far as I know, but they, they use different kind of platforms. So it's, if there there audience, is right. a bias. Yeah, yeah, effectively. But we have a lot of Americans. We have a lot of Asian Americans. We'll just see who, who drops in the comments and tells us. So uh, let us know. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of Asian born girls, I find that they don't want to do any PDA, like zero. I've dated a girl like that, like no touching, no kissing in public. But once you're actually private, like they are ready to go wild, yeah. right? There is a cultural nuance of Asian born girls versus Asian American for sure. And obviously in a group setting when there's like guys and girls and, you know, Asians rolling deep, you definitely have to be aware of that, that mate guarding. Like I used to go to like these Asian clubs and like end of the night, there'd always be like Asian dudes fighting. Like they just get drunk, you know, they're whatever, they're fresh and they just get into fight because like some guy's talking to some girl that's part of this group, this group. Like there are absolute nuances when it comes to like Asian American, Asian born, you have to be aware of like the male dynamic in the Asian group. So I guess that it's better to open up your dating pool so that way you don't have to be like this very just having to like defuse minds in a small in-group when you could just expand your your horizons. How about the height thing? We haven't talked about the height thing so far. So, you know, especially, I'm not sure in particular, but maybe it's more of an East Asian stereotype that mm -hmm. Asians are small. Uh, if you're Chinese, Korean, Japanese, you might be small and so on. What What are your perspectives on the height thing? Does it matter? What can you do about it? And so on. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I'm 5'5". Five five, so I'm definitely on the short side. And especially in the West, where there is a very strong height preference, I always tell my students, like, you have to have a command presence. Like, the way you approach in whatever manner, indirect, direct style, how you come off, should typically be, like, significantly more dominant than, say, you're normally comfortable with, just to kind of counteract whatever perception options, whether it's stereotype or like a height preference. Like I love like tall queens. I like I, the taller, the better for me. Like it's just something that I enjoy, but it does come down to if you are a short guy, while there are certain things you can like, you know, quote unquote, like height max and looks max and sexual market value. It all comes down to like, can you bring a command presence? This is typically why I like direct game, but you know, any kind of style of game can work so long as you bring a presence, a personality, a charisma, a charm about yourself that overcomes any sort of like unconscious bias that she might have. Now, there will still be women that will always prefer a tall guy regardless, right? But there are ways to at least from your personality, give the perception, the feeling, if you will, that you are larger than life. Yeah, sorry, guys. I uh, appreciate being on the panel. Um, thank you so much to Ice White. Thanks to all the other great coaches on here. Keep up the good work. Thanks for watching our video. I hope you liked it. And make sure you guys subscribe to this channel and watch all our other videos. Great news too. Every Monday, we'll be putting out a new weekly video. That's right, we've got educational seminars, street interviews, uh, fun infield pickup videos, and anything else we can come up with that's fun for you guys to watch. So check back.